Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, in today's video, it's finally here. My pre-order or Kickstarter backing of the Big Me Galley, the good e-reader cooperation version of their Gallery 3 device is finally here. So let's check it out and see what it's like. But please remember, this is not an in-depth review. I have just received this box. So this is going to be unboxing and first impressions only to bring you as quickly as I can some perspective and some objective kind of reporting on this highly interesting and uh, highly awaited device. Well, there we go. So Big Me has delivered. And because I am a backer of their galley device, I have just received, like literally an hour ago, I have received my unit, which is the Big Me galley, the cover and accessory. No idea what's in the accessory. So let's unbox it and see what's what. All right, I really do like the box before I actually pull the contents out. I do like this like kind of royal official thing. And yes, it's with good e-reader, big me just for you. AI note, all right, whatever that means. On the side, again, you have big me good e-reader, big me good e-reader, ha, not on the bottom. And here on the back, you got the specifications and we have that its name is Galley. It is an eight inch color ink screen. And the whole point of it is that it's using a Gallery 3 screen, not a Kaleido screen. So that's what makes Galley so interesting. It is actually also a very, very powerful tablet as it has a octa core 2.3 gigahertz CPU with six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of ROM storage. And it is expandable using the uh, micro SD card up to one terabyte. So that's really, really cool. Of course, as far as wireless goes, you get the 2.45 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It doesn't say which protocol version it has. Dimensions are 181 by 159 by 6.95 millimeters. It has, this is a strange choice. It's a dual camera tablet. So it has a front and a rear dual cameras. I have no idea why that would be a part of it, but all right. And two in one fingerprint button, which I guess is the power button and the fingerprint reader, 36 levels of both cold and warm front light and a 3000 milliamp battery um, that powers all of that goodness. So let's see what do we get inside of the package just for you. Again, the the experience, the unboxing experience of the galley keeps improving. It's very nice. And all of the details are there. It's easy to pull out the contents. It's easy to just open this up. Another layer of extra protection. And here we go. We have the device inside. And again, easy-ish to open. All right, that, that was that was okay, but it's again something that helps open it up. Mm, that's a that's a weighty device. Okay, we get the pen. We will unbox it and see what's it like. Oh, this is the standard uh, active pen that we had with Bouquin Notaire, or whatever you want to call it. It's just the, the only difference is it has a different charging system in the back. If you remember, Notaire had a USB-C. This is a detachable module. This one is obviously magnetic. Uh, I would hope so. And I assume it attaches to the device to the side and maybe charges from the device, which would be a good thing. But it also means that it has multiple buttons here. And hopefully there is an option to actually customize the functionality of these buttons. And generally speaking, this was a good feeling pen. The nib inside looks that it's of a regular standard. Let's try and get it out. <laughs> without the tool there we go so yep that's the same normal regular regular standard that you would get with uh, 
remarkable books and other types of nibs. So that's really cool and it feels pretty, pretty good. So this is an overall okay pen with great functionalities, but the ergonomics of it are not the best. One of the things that I do like is that it's extremely light. It's much, much lighter than the one with the Notea, which also had like the battery all the way up here. And then if we just flail, flail around and the balance would not be that good. This is not the case with this one. So don't be uh, mistaken. It, even though it looks almost exactly like the uh, Notea pen, it's, uh, it, it has the same problem of slipperiness, I would guess, because it's the same material and the comfort will depend. It will really vary from uh, user to user, but at least the weight balance seems to have been improved. And yep, here we go. Even up to this point, it's actually balancing quite nicely. So that's the pen. Some more documentation here. Additionally, I have also received, I believe that this is the cover. So I'm gonna just unpack all of it. Pygmy, just for you, for Galley. Nice, I like the detail. This is kind of cool. I appreciate these little details. Nice, this is black. I like it. Let's uh, get it out uh, later. We'll just leave it. So this is the cover. Let's see what we get in the accessories box. Ha, huh, no line on the accessory box. Consistency, people, come on. Eh. Uh, this is much more difficult to open. So let's see what we get here. You get a USB-C to USB-A cable, and I guess you get extra nibs. Do you get like two nibs? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you get two extra nibs, nib extraction tool, and the tool for opening up the uh, TF card or the uh, micro SD card slot for the memory. All right. And this is the entirety of the whole package, all, all, all three boxes that you receive. You received the Big Me Galley, you received the flipbook cover, the active pen, USB-C to USB-A cable, supporting documentation, and two extra nibs with the nib extraction tool and the tool for the micro SD card slot. So let's focus on the Galley. All right, so let's get it out of its protective pouch and see what the device is like. Well, it's it's weighty. Definitely it is a weighty kind of uh, device. Let's take the protective cover off. It is pretty. This is a very, very pretty device. I love the design. Um, I really do like that it's a nice pure kind of black uh, surface here. The surface on the top is not papery like, so it's not going to eat your nibs too quickly. And the reflectivity is seems to be quite, quite good. Remember, these are, these are super strong lights. This is a more normal light on the side. And here is a fully open window right next to me on a fully sunny day. So this is looking quite okay. But the weight, there's there's quite a bit of weight here. It just feels like a lot of the weight is here and that it's not equally distributed. And that's something that I do feel Im immediately, even though your holding surface is definitely here, but the majority of weight is there. So it's really, really pulling on one side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's it looks like the battery is somewhere around here. All right, so that's not ideal. Let's see what's on the back of the device. Okay. Well, books can learn from Big Me. <laughs> it seems to be like because even though it does have two cameras, they are not protruding. There is no need for a camera on a limited e-ink device to protrude like it does on the Tab Ultra, which is a completely ridiculous design decision that they've kind of made. And Big Me Galley actually confirms that. 
Yes, it has two cameras. No, I don't see the point of having them, but they are not disturbing me. So the only thing that I would have appreciated was if there was an option like a sticker that was included that fits this type of area here so that you can put a sticker on here and a sticker on there for those people who do not want to use it and because of obviously privacy issues. Why people gravitate towards these e-ink and e-note devices? Well, it's because of prim primarily privacy issues and convenience of, uh, up to a large degree. And adding like a camera that's constantly looking at you and a camera on the back and, you know, a line of four microphones on top that are going to be kind of constantly listening in that is not going to be appealing to some people so for me for example i know that if i'm going to be using this device i am for sure putting something over that front camera and over the back camera the back camera doesn't matter that much but over the front one absolutely so Let's check out the design of it. It looks really nice. I think that they've tried to match. This is a kind of greenish gray color. This is not the tint of my recording. This is actually kind of greenish on the side. Even though the screen itself doesn't have a greenish gray tint, it has more of a reddish tint, which is an interesting thing to see. I would have expected galley to actually be a neutral in color but i guess it can't because it has all of those uh, uh pigment cells underneath so you will see some of them through the whites i guess right now you get a little bit translucency so you do see some uh levels and the white isn't a perfect white it's more of a orangish color it's a very clean affair as far as the design goes as i mentioned Flush screen on top, good reflectivity surface, extra wide side here, weight distribution not that great. On the back, super clean, nothing except the camera, unfortunately, and the camera on the front. On the top, we have the power button, which I would assume doubles as a fingerprint reader, as if the front camera was not enough. And then you have four uh, microphones to top off the whole listening in Bonanza. On the side, we have the holder for the pen, I would guess. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, let's try that one more time. This, 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 this is weak. Like this is, no. <laughs> this is a no. Uh, the camera, the way it's uh, inverted, it doesn't uh, show, but the weight of the pen is actually making the pen, this is how it should be in line. And when I let it go, it starts kind of hanging low and the magnet, okay, the magnets are dreadful on this. Now let's check it if it's the device that has wrong magnets or no, the device has horrifically weak magnets. So that is that this this is just not working at all. I mean, that's that's a very very weak point. So I would have absolutely zero confidence in uh, keeping that pen on the side. I think that this should have been uh, done better. However, you do have that charging port, and that's where your pen is charging from. Continuing on to the bottom, we have the USB-C um, here, I guess the LED for status and the micro SD TF card slot that you can uh, expand up to one terabyte here. And on the side, we have dual uh, stereo speakers. And that is the layout of the uh, Big Me Galley. Now let's do the first power up, it's over here and see how does it perform and how does the actual screen perform and see the reason why they didn't want to send one to me. Hey, it's getting to be more gray, less orangey. Maybe that was just the image that was orangey. Because if you do remember, um, for those who were following, um, Big Me has contacted me uh, back in November and they wanted um, to send me a review device. Then they stopped communicating and then 
I asked and asked and asked like after three or four follow-up emails and over a month they finally I finally got a, like an honest response from them which was hey you're influential and we're afraid of it because it's not perfect the device is not perfect so we're afraid that um, yeah you might have some negative comments on it or something like that and um, but yeah once we have it out of beta we will send you one and my question was, well, I'm getting one regardless of whether they send me one or mine that I ordered, or basically I backed up the Kickstarter. If um, yeah, if I'm if I'm gonna receive that one, and and of course I got my version first, not the one from the uh, big me. So that's something to also kind of keep in mind. All right, so I'm starting the initial um, setup, and it says, okay, did it did it find it? I guess we're you power up the button then you press on scan and there we go we got the pen hooked up I need to set up the Wi-Fi okay connected to Wi-Fi and because uh, Gally is powered by Android 11 or 12 I'm not entirely sure I think it maybe is 12 swipe up from the bat button multitask switching uh, squitch squeeching <laughs> multitask squeeching back home Full refresh, no functionality on the side, no functionality on the other side. But what can you customize if you do turn them on? Uh, there we go. That was not reactive. Volume plus minus warm light plum plus minus cold light plus minus. All right, let's go to the next step. Log into AI Note. New. Scan to join Big Me official WeChat group. Uh, no, I don't want this i don't want that okay thank you why why is it aggressive with the logging in stuff so even though i obviously chose the um english language um the first system update is fully on chinese and it doesn't have English uh, support so that's I don't know what this means and I don't know what it says what has been fixed um, but I guess if I'm gonna do first impressions the only thing that's fair is to actually do the first update now so that I can have you know the first impressions of a version which I can see here is 2.8.4 so let's start update pause the recording and resume once it's done <laughs> So it's updated and now we can actually just take a look. So this is the welcome screen. I have no idea how does the uh, Big Me OS environment look like. So this is my first encounter with something like this. So we have, I guess this would be the top uh, bar with the home, I guess brightness. Yes, so we have refresh mode, extreme, black and white and HD. Let's go to, oh, HD is probably a lot slower. Ooh, that's uh, okay. Then we have full fresh refrequency, re dark enhancement, vivid enhancement, color brightness. Okay, cool. So that's like an e-ink center. And so is there a difference between X launcher and e-ink center? I guess not. Then we have, this is probably the Yep, this is the Google Play Store and we have Google Play Store pre-installed, which is fantastic to see. You don't have to do any of the craziness to kind of get it logged in so that it actually works. Well, actually, let's log in and see to verify that. Hmm. Well, um, the stability is not the great best because this is what happened when I was uh, trying to log into the Play Store. I literally just typed in my email address put in next so that I can get to the uh, password and uh, it just blinked into black and right now 
Okay, there we go. So now it's still alive. That was weird. And right, so far the responsiveness of the device is really, really slow. I don't know if it's the responsiveness of the device or the screen itself. But um, yeah, the whole point for me was to actually check the Google Play Store, uh, if it actually works or not. And it works. You don't have to register the device or anything like that. You simply log in and it all works. But as you can see, I'm now third, fourth time. There we go. We're trying to kind of get to different modes here so that I can see how the colors are. And there we go. We got red, blue and green showing kind of okay you can see just the basic colors here how they look like in hd mode uh, let's try and get the extreme mode just so i can see what's gonna happen with the colors and huh interesting now you get more shading in the green one you lose a little bit of sharpness but you gain a bit more shades, which is rather interesting. So, okay, so Google Play definitely works. This is your apps. Uh, this would be a notebook, I guess. Global handwriting, okay? So you have global handwriting. Uh, what would this be? This icon here. Okay, so that's your multi uh, multitasking switcher. What is this? Split screen, cool, has a split screen, system-wide split screen, Android 11, it's not 12, just so you know. Um, get your settings and the back and all of the stuff here. Now, does it work? Can I go to the date here? Can I go to Wi-Fi? Yes, I can, okay, that's good. 4G? That's weird. And pen and the device battery. Uh, status. All right, so uh, it's very rudimentary, kind of segmented user interface, but it's logical and it's kind of easy to see what's what. It's cluttered, it's not nice to look at because you have many unnecessary lines here, and that's not the ideal way of actually creating a good and, and, and uh, intuitive user interface, but at least the segmentation and the placement of things and the grouping of things makes sense. It's something that does make sense. So on the other side, we have meeting records, notes, offline books, local storage, cloud, scan document, office, task list, menu management, manage menu manage uh, And then you can actually customize this. So you have tons of things to choose from. And one of them is the camera as well. So, okay, I know some people are going to be interested in that. So let's see, what does it say? So what does the camera say? Uh, let's flip the camera. How do I flip the camera? I guess here. Hello. So this is the top camera or the front camera. And that's the performance of the camera itself. Ha, my messy hair is there, but still, um, yeah, we're talking about maybe two frames a second at best. Um, so I really don't understand and, and it doesn't look good at all. So I don't fully understand what the front camera is for. Okay, turn on HD mode. Uh, it doesn't really help it much. Now when I go around, <laughs> this is ridiculous, it has a video mode. And we have the same type of performance here. So let's say, for example, I want to take photos of the pen. And it, it, it is a camera, right? It's doing things, but why like what's what's the point of this so i really really don't understand the the point of the camera 
system, dual camera system. I mean, that's just gonna eat away at the battery unnecessarily, but okay, it's there. It is what it is. All right, it was an easy affair of just hooking up the USB. It was automatically detected by the PC and I was able to just drag and drop stuff that I wanted. So let's see if it automatically, I dragged and dropped things into my uh, books directory. So copy your books to books directory. I did that. Automatically scan, uh, top right menu import, manually import books to the memory card. Okay, so I guess local import. Uh, but uh, didn't it say that it should automatically scan? So is there an option to scan? Uh, or rescan or something like that? User manual download. Okay, I guess I it's not automatic because this is what it should. I mean, I've already copied that. So let's go on in local import and then let's do. Uh, you can't select all you, you can. Uh, oh, this is painful. What the hell do you do when you actually import your entire library? Like where's there we go. Select all. OK, select all import. Yes, confirm. But how is this automatic when it says Maybe I'm crazy, but I think it said in the in the uh, beginning that. OK, there we go. So now we have access to things and here we go. So I'm going to try out two different documents just to kind of see how it looks like the clarity of the uh, overall. Uh, so this is a hyperlink. OK. The clarity of the image and responsiveness of the device, pretty good. So this is okay. Does it work with the middle? Okay, so formatting, can we format to fit to width? Excellent, excellent, I really like this. And it persists, excellent. This is very, very nice to see that you can have this because I should be able to uh, go to settings, I guess. No, uh, I want to turn auto rotation or just rotation at least, maybe more settings. Mm, rotation on, okay. And we go back. Okay, um, let's go back to the. This is the cluttered user interface that I was talking about. It's just like icons all over the place and there's no need for it to be that cluttered. So I've turned the rotation on and I should have landscape orientation now and I do. And in smaller documents, you get it to be very, very usable and something that's actually quite nice. The responsiveness could be a bit better. But overall, this is not that bad. So let's go back to normal. Uh, come on. Oof. Oof. He's, <laughs> he's I'm struggling, Jim. I'm really struggling here. Um, all right, let's go to oh, Jesus Christ, you get like half a second to choose what you want. Make up your mind immediately. Okay. So this is now in HD mode. Okay, handwriting is not supported in HD mode. And the refresh rate is incredibly slow. So that's the Gallery 3 at its best uh, uh, image quality. It is extremely slow. All right, so it's a good thing that they've implemented the extreme refresh mode. The only problem is that uh, how short amount of time you're allowed to actually access the upper toolbar and the slow refresh rate in combination means that you're going to have a really hard time accessing the upper toolbar 
uh, in HD mode. So they could allow for a little bit more time there. All right, so now let's go to black and white and see what the performance is like there on the screen. Okay, so can it rival a regular e-ink? Mm, not quite. So the image quality is not really there maybe with the adjustments maybe with the e ink adjustments and everything uh, maybe that's something that i would be able to kind of get it to be a bit better but we'll we'll check that on another document however this is black and white but we're clearly seeing red pigmentation here so no it's not really um it's not not doing what it should be doing and it's not ghosting because you can see that each time i return even more weird yeah you get some redness definitely there in the gray ones okay so let's see how does that work without dark enhancement at all so that's basically lowering the contrast quite a bit and yes it's far more readable so the default setting is not really suited for black and white content but this is okay the, the thin text is really thin and it tends to fade out as you can see in the documents it's um it is way way too thin and for that i believe that you will most definitely want to have some dark enhancement let's go maybe to here yes and then it kind of helps but it doesn't really help the clarity of the text itself as you can see the font kind of breaks up and it's just not 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 that great on smaller text so i do love the option that we have the options to change these things um, and I really love that out of the box it was immediately possible to adjust the reader so that it can fit the width, I can have auto rotation, so extremely usable, really, really usable and really, really good for that, but um, yeah, so color brightness and this would be saturation, yeah, you can saturate the, the bejesus out of it. But let's keep it at uh, zero. All right, so that's a general kind of uh, text with some images type of a document. It's working, it's a little bit strange. The updates, as you can see, it's like, vrr, like vrr. it's it's very, very odd. It's I guess it's updating one layer of cells. So each, each flicker is maybe just uh, updating certain cells and then other cells. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. But um, the overall perform performance is yeah, what you kind of see. What I kind of find strange is that now again, I have this kind of yellowish tint and I don't know where, uh, maybe in settings, there we go. Is the yellowish tint the front light? Let's turn the front light totally off. Nope, the yellowish tint is the tint of the screen and this is a white page in the background. So there is most definitely a yellowish tint to the device. Okay, so let's go back and find the other document. There we go. So this is uh, the one which is just with colors and you should be able to kind of test out the, uh, the full on performance of the gallery screen and this is how it looks like ghosting is okay definitely present but something that's okay for small text this is a small format small text on small format it's never going to be a good combination it's okay but not something that i would be saying that it's awesome what uh those are not the colors that it that I'm looking for. Overall, it has quite a bit of an orangey tint to it, and there's not that much details here. It, it really, oh, okay. So let's let's get rid of the dark enhancement. This is definitely affecting it badly. Okay, so now it's better but still it's really washed out 
uh, really really washed out okay and there's the contrast there's like almost no contrast um, so let's try and adjust something so that I can get it a little bit better what's the recommended is 10 let's increase saturation a bit more how how does it work with the saturation well not that great Okay, let's try and put it at 20. As you can see, the responsiveness is uh, really slow. And we don't want to wash out the colors any more than they are. No, we don't. Okay, so let's see this. <clears throat> okay, a bit better. But the dark enhancement is just way too strong. Let's... Uh, Let's kill the dark enhancement all the way down. Oh, this, these are not. Um, no, I'm, I'm not a fan. I was expecting more. Uh, I was, uh, honestly, I was expecting a lot more from the implementation of the gallery screen because this is. Um, yeah, this is it, the the orange tint is far far too strong. That there's there's something happening. Something is not, you know, right in the country of Denmark. Um, but I don't know if the camera is picking it up. But there's like a sepia, super strong sepia tint on top of everything, and also the calibration of the image is such that I can't really with the controls that I have available to me, I can't get the best results. So now let's switch over to HD and see if maybe that is better. Whoa. Do you see this? Okay, this is better. Okay, let's let's reset to the recommended settings, right? So let's see what do they recommend. Just reset it to that. This is their recommendation. And this is the HD mode. And the ghosting is, besides the having really super slow performance, you still get ghosting, which is like, and I don't see much better quality between HD and extreme. Did I manage? Yes. Uh, the, the HD thing is so unresponsive that I, I wouldn't be able to actually use that in any capacity. And honestly, I don't see that much of a dramatic difference in quality as, as much as I can see the dramatic difference in speed. And actually, in some aspects, it was just exploded and not calibrated nicely. And uh, yeah, so that's the screen okay let's turn on the front light and see if it helps uh when we set it up maybe 50 50 to kind of make it a bit brighter like a lot brighter so does that wash out the tint mm, no not really just makes it glow more so you always have this orange tint present and I don't know about you guys, but I, I, for me, this is, I expected more. I really, really expected more. The colors are washed out. They're in, they're not correct and they don't look nice. Um, honestly, uh, I think Kaleido 3 might be uh, a better performer than this. It will be interesting to see for sure. Um, but I was really, really, really hoping for a lot more. And you guys will see that uh, DES, for example, panels outperform gallery like in, in every respect. Uh, image quality, speed, and all of these things. Ghosting, no, and usability, real world usability, not so much because it's dif difficult. But this is, this is far, far below 
my expectations. I don't know if it's the panel itself or the calibration of the panel, how it's been implemented in this particular device. But overall, this, this is my first impression is um, disappointing. All right, now let's get into notes and just do the first impression of a note taking because this is a note taking capable device. So what do we have here? We have a dockable menu. Okay, there's a template. I want a lined template. Uh, wow, the, the user interface is a complete mess. This is just, I mean, this is where your <laughs> categories are <laughs> recently office default local there's one one kind of mega sentence all right so let's see default uh plan i'm just trying to find a normal horizontal line oof and the templates are not uh scaled to the resolution of the device and there therefore you get the inconsistency of rendering of these uh, lines so that is a that is a consequence of not having um, uh, templates that are in the resolution of the device itself, and the thumbnails are also not in the uh, power of two resolution of the device. Therefore, you have skipped lines and missed lines. So fairly, this is just this is uh, not acceptable. Let's put it like that. Um, I mean, level of competency needs to be higher to not have this, that your template is rendered inconsistently. Maybe, maybe, I mean, the, the, the thing that normally happens is if you don't have the resolution of the image uh, in the exact same res resolution of the device itself, you will force the device to scale the image down or scale it up. In this case, I think it's scaling it uh, down or up. And then you don't have pixel perfect template. And when you don't have a pixel perfect template, then you get this, where the line's thickness is going to be completely inconsistent. And for me, this is completely unacceptable. Now, that would be the most common reason, but it could also be that uh, maybe it was prepared for the resolution of the screen, but it was not prepared for the actual rendered scale or the resolution, or, which would be far worse, the worst option would be that the screen is not interpreting the pixels correctly and is in, you know, introducing this, but this is a telltale sign of incorrect scaling. Anyway, let's see what we have here. So we have pen, pencil, brush, ball pen, highlighter. So we got five with an R here. Seriously, like, am I the only one who believes that maybe, maybe this should not be okay? Um, I don't know. It doesn't, it costs money. This device costs money. You pay good money for it and you should be able to receive a much better experience. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, uh, we got black, orangish. I guess this is supposed to be red. Oh my God, that's red. All right, and here we're gonna see exactly some of the issues that we have, which is black is rendered black. This orangish brick magenta-ish color is red. This is how pure red pixels are represented on the Big Me Galley. This is a huge problem. This is not red. This is not even close to red. This is orange. Blue, on the other hand, is super dark. This is like uber, uber dark. In reality, it looks almost like black. You get a tint of blue, but this is like super dark purple. This is magenta and it's more pink, so obviously off. Yellow is yellow, but it's super pale. Cyan works. And green works, but it's on the darker side of things. All right, so the color calibration is way, way off 
in the red spectrum and way too dark when we're talking about the blue color itself. Very, very problematic to begin with. And that actually kind of makes sense uh, why the rendering of the images was the, 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 the document I was checking. If this is how the device is interpreting red pixels, then yeah, that, that makes quite a bit of sense. I would have loved to see like, how does it interpret gray or shades of gray would be nicer things to see, but okay. So finally, let's do some typing, but at least this was an insightful thing. Oh, let's zoom out. Mm. Okay. Uh, maybe I didn't select it. Is this a joke? <laughs> like, seriously, let's make it thicker so you can see it a bit better. And let's make it red. And yeah, let's, am I in HD? No, this is extreme, okay. Yeah, it can't write in HD, okay. So test number. Two is a lot better. So this this works. So what the hell was happening in the first one? Is it a color thing? Let's go back to green. So oh my god. So green performance is abysmal my god you guys are making me work way too much now i have to test every color because you have inconsistent oh, oh. this is supposed to be first impressions <sighs> magenta is also bad but not as terrible which makes sense because it doesn't have that many green pigments and pixels. Uh, yellow is barely visible. I don't know if, if you can even see it. I can barely see it, but it, the performance is kind of like the red. Pink or magenta, I would assume, is going to be good because it's relying on... Uh, Magenta is nice and fast. Excellent. So very, very fast and very, very nice in the magenta colors. And we get blue. I would assume it's going to be fine. No, blue is not fine either. Hmm. Okay, uh, the feeling is very plasticky writing on this, even though the nib is good, the surface of the screen is not that nice. It's, it's a little, it's on the border of squeaky. It doesn't squeak, but it's borderline kind of squeaky and not the best. Uh, this is supposed to be red, but it not uh, but the speed is okay what do we say with the black which is the one that you're probably going to be writing most and writing with the black color is excellent and and where's the eraser Good thing to figure it out. Maybe it is. Oh, it's a region. Okay, so that's that. And quite fast. This actually feels very, very fast. So the black writing here is super fast. This is ridiculously fast. And I don't know, this is almost like instant. And I'm going to be very interested to see 
what the actual performance is. There's like a tiny bit of latency, but it feels super, super fast when you're writing in black. The green and the blue are horrific. Um, the magenta, this is not magenta, this is cyan and magenta are nice, are okay, -ish, a bit better. And the red, uh, red and oh, this is the same. So this and this is supposed to be the same color, but it's not. There's something really, really odd going on with this device. But let's go on to the next page. Uh, let's go on to the next page, he said and hoped. Okay, we got to tap the button. Okay, right, cool, cool, fine, excellent, great. So we have, I'm going to test everything now in black so you can see how does the pen perform. Is it pressure sensitive? What the hell was that? Okay, so there was a strange delay. So is this a pressure sensitive brush? It is, and I don't like it. It's not, not that sensitive at all. All right, so let's see the pencil brush. Let's put it a bit wider so you can test out the pressure sensitivity. Okay, is it pressure side sensitive? No, it is not angle sensitive. As a brush, it's okay. I think that it can do things, but it's now standard brush that you can see in most of these. Uh, Chinese developed um, uh, tablets, so nothing really spectacular. It's it's fine, but it's nowhere near what you see on the Kindle and what you see on the Remarkable. Okay, then we're trying to get to the brush. And let's make it a bit thicker. All standards at four, because I can just test uh, wrong color. Let's see. All right, not bad. That would be the brush. This would be the ballpoint pen. Yes, the ball pen. Four, before, black. This is the ballpoint pen. Not pressure sensitive and very quick and very responsive. And then finally we get the highlighter. Mm. What? Highlighter works like this? Uh. Okay, so I guess the idea is if you want to highlight several parts of text that you can just simply do this and then it highlights everything. All right, fine. There, there are issues here, to say the very least. There are issues. Um, the biggest ones is the, obviously, the writing inconsistency speed between different colors. Second one is the rendering of the red is not red. This is not red. Um, but on the positives, the um, speed writing latency uh, of the black ink is exceptionally good. So yeah, those would be the first impressions as far as writing goes on the Pygmy Galley. All right, and now before I wrap it up, I'm gonna check out the, uh, the cover and put the device in the cover and see how the whole thing looks like. All right, so first and foremost, the material is quite nice. It's a flip book cover. Is it magnetic? Yes, but fairly weak. You open it up and it should be magnetic and it has good e-reader on the back if that's something that you like. So you take the device, you plop it in, it plops in into place well. It's held very, very strongly into this place, which is great. Even though it is a weighty device, the magnets here are well oriented, polarized and well made. This is out to wake up and all is close, and then you just flip it like this, works. How about the pen? Because you might want to have your pen with you, like this. 
Uh, it's that's that's not elegant. There we go. Then it works. Um, it, there could be a little bit more slack here, a little bit more dimension here to allow for the pen to actually be kind of uh, to allow a little bit more space so that this can fit more easily. But it kind of works. Yep. So I can shake it. The pen, well, of course, falls out. So let's try and demonstrate if that's going to happen again. So like this side shake. Yep, it just falls out. Let's do one more. See if it's three out of three. Yep. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> this was awesome, like a cartoon. Spit that pen out, close yourself down, and that's it. So yeah, um, the design of the cover isn't really accommodating to the pen because you can see how it's really, really tight here. So it's taut very, very, very tight here. And that means that it's not really fitting the pen properly. So if I take a thinner pen, for example, my Samsung pen, you can see what I mean. So that you can just flip the cover here and close it, right? And then when it's over here, just do like this. And then I can, ah, this one is designed to spit out pens. <laughs> It's, that's the special feature that you have. They should put that. So, but what I'm talking about is that uh, diameter of the pen, because this is a really thick pen. I don't think it's been calculated properly because this is, this doesn't want to go this way. So yeah, it's an elegant package. I like how it looks like, and you do have the space for the camera, which is like mah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it could have been done a bit better. This is just like an oversight as if it was not planned to use a pen of that size. So yeah, um, which is a bit too bad because overall it's a rather nice package. Well, okay, so big me just for you, the galley. First impressions, I like the overall design and the build quality. I think that it like looks nice. I think that the cameras are completely unnecessary. I have absolutely no idea what is the point of having both front and rear cameras. That being said, the positive of it is that they are not protruding like they are, unfortunately, on the Tab Ultra. So there's a positive if you really want to look for one, but just having cameras is just going to drain more battery. It's a privacy concern. Having two cameras on a device like this, it would have made sense if the gallery tree as a display performed better. And that just ties me into the next uh, uh, kind of first impressions thing. And I have expected far, far more from the uh, galley from the galley. I can't, this is the first gallery tree screen uh, power device that I've seen. There should be one from Philips. I'm not really sure, but we will have to see. The first impressions are not good because the red is not red. <laughs> the, uh, the speed is inconsistent as you've seen in writing. Uh, there's ghosting that's pretty bad all throughout. It doesn't have enough advantages over the Kaleido technology, which is kind of strange because there shouldn't be that much darkness and that much tint um, on this one. And just for an example, like here they are back to back, a regular e-ink screen on a Supernote and the Big Me Galley, how they display the white color and I think that it's not as dark as it is on Kaleido panels, but just for comparison's sake, here's the DES screen on the uh, Top Joy Butterfly, the six inch. More on that one a little bit later. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's kind of similar, almost the same. So that's the first disappointment because one of the biggest problems that I do have with the Kaleido technology is that it's so much darker than the already dark uh, regular monochromatic e-ink screens and hope was that the Big Me Galley or the Gallery 3 panel would actually remedy that and it, 
I think that it does to a small degree that it's a bit brighter than the uh, Kaleido. I don't have any Kaleido devices here to compare against, otherwise I would have uh, compared it against them. But uh, yeah, it's it's still not that great. So even that, if I put it aside, the pure image quality is the biggest disappointment from, for me. The, the clarity, there's lack of clarity, there's lack of sharpness, there's lack of contrast, there's the, the colors are all over the place, they're just not, the green is not green, the red is not red, the blue is not blue. So when you look at the colored content, it's just not pleasant. It just doesn't look nice. And that's what I would expect from a device like this. So whether or not this is a calibration thing or a gallery tree panel issue, that remains to be seen because if it is just like a software kind of thing to calibrate how much of red cells are going to be in uh, uh, displayed in the red pixel and things like that, how it's combined, maybe it's not combined. But even in the Big Me logo, you can see that the red dot right there, the, the saturation of it and the visibility of it is far, far under what we have here, which is kind of grayish, bluish type of color. So I've expected a lot. I really wanted to kind of love it. And, and, and you probably will see that I was very excited in my announcement videos when they first announced Big Me Galley uh, back in November. And that's why I backed it up as a Kickstarter. And that's why I have this one. Um, so I was hopeful that a gallery tree uh, technology would be a big, big step up when compared to the Kaleido tree, when compared to the DES panels. But actually it's not. Um, if I compare it to the Kaleido, I will have to get some kind of Kaleido device to actually compare it. And I'm gonna wait for a Kaleido tree panel to actually come out because that's going to be uh, current. And then it's gonna make sense to compare between these two because Kaleido Plus is now aging. So Kaleido tree is the one, the only one relevant to compare to. But uh, I'm pretty sure that the differences are not going to be that great uh, or that, that large between the two. Yet the speed, the speed, the lack of speed refresh on the gallery tree, for me at least, doesn't justify what you get, the quality that you get. I think that's the biggest problem of all. Because when put into perspective, Kaleido Plus is better than what I see here. Yes, it's darker, it's a little bit wa more washed out. Yes, you do have color issues problems and uh, ghosting problems, but the speed to performance ratio, if you compare between these two, is it, it, it's kind of a complete no-brainer. Um, the other problem for me is the overall image clarity, even of the black and white text on this one is not that great, which is kind of surprising. The contrast is the... the, the the letters are not sharp and it's just, it's not excelling at any given point. I think that's my first impression about the Big Migali is that it's trying to do a lot of things with a technology that's not meant to do a lot of things, hence the cameras here. And I think that was their mindset. Let's just create an Android 11 all out tablet that just happens to have a gallery tree screen without doing a proper research on what the gallery tree screen can actually do and what it's suited for and what it's not suited for. I would imagine, I haven't tried YouTube, but I would imagine that it's unwatchable on this, uh, but that's going to be something that's kind of a test on the, uh, when the in-depth review comes and it's gonna give me a heck of a lot more work to work with because the desktop test is gonna be, have to be done for every single color because the performance is different for every single color. So currently it's an early release and software side of things I can overlook because it's so early. And the UI stuff I can overlook, it's a mess. I mean, all of those things need to be fixed, so it's not ideal. But we're talking about fundamentally bigger issues here, which is the heart of it. And as the galley or the gallery three panel, and to me, the first impressions are ah, disappointing. I hope you liked the video and I hope that you found it interesting and informative and useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. And also, if you do like the work that I do and you do like the independence of my deep guide, um, your support is the one that actually makes it possible for me to 
out of my own money just buy these products so that I can give you a fully independent review so that you can know exactly what this device for example is like and what it's not like because unfortunately there's quite some misinformation online especially regarding this device it's uh, it's a little bit kind of tricky to to get proper info and that's the whole point of my deep guide is to just go like you know very very raw let's test this let's give you the data and you decide what you want i will give you my own personal opinion i've given you uh, an objective analysis and that's it and you will see that there's no sponsored content ever or anything like that on my deep guide and that's made possible due to your support so if you do want to support uh, my deep guides independence even further then please do check out mydeepguide.com shop and you will find the my daily organizer 2023 in there what's a my daily organizer it's a hyperlinked pdf file that satisfies all your personal or professional organizing needs in a really really nicely laid out yearly quarterly monthly weekly daily planner organizer and a diary and it has thousands of satisfied customers who are really really happy and i'm happy that that makes them happy you can also see in the description down below video list mdo playlist that has tons of details about the mdo so that you can figure out if that's a product for you or not thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video Bye.